Welcome everyone to Autogefühl with Thomas. Autogefühl is your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today we're going to discuss sports cars. I would rather say compact sports cars, so not the real big super sports cars. Also not the very most expensive sports cars. It's about the Jaguar F-Type, the Porsche Cayman and the Audi TT. Very, very exciting to compare these cars. Actually, they all have different strengths, so we're going to discuss that. Put them all in the comments, your thoughts, and I will also draw a conclusion of my own later in the video. So let's first take a look at these three very sporty and exciting cars, and we definitely will have a lot of fun with these. The open top sister or twin, the Porsche Boxster, was just a standalone car in its first generation. Then with the second generation of the Boxster, there was a first generation of the Cayman. And well, usually you make the coupe cheaper and they're convertible with a, you know, with a complicated top system. It's more expensive, but in this case it's the other way around. So a very special way Porsche is going there. And meanwhile, the Boxer is in the third generation and the Cayman then in the second generation since 2013. And still, the Cayman is still more expensive. But what do they do? They make it sportier. So that is kind of the argument that the Cayman is sportier, not only because of the closed roof, but also from the power. The Cayman always has a little bit more power. Then there are of course differences from the normal Cayman and the Cayman GTS, here also from the exterior. Everything is more aggressive and also has this dark look. This one by the way is sapphire blue, my absolute favorite color with Porsche. Maybe even with the whole uh, automotive industry, sapphire blue with Porsche, one of my favorite colors, so great. But then again with the GTS version you for example have a black background here with the headlights. And also the lower part is stronger and also all covered in black as well as the air intakes here in the front. So let's get inside. You've seen here at the handle, it slides a little bit upwards and I like it very much, especially this small feature. So here in the Porsche Cayman GTS we have the special super sport seats and on the first hand they look very uncomfortable and you firstly wonder, um, you cannot really adjust the back part, it's not possible. You can just pull this string here and then you can just flip it if you maybe want to put something behind it um, I'm not sure I wouldn't use it in everyday life but at least it's possible here but when sitting there it's not possible to adjust the back part 
The only thing you can adjust there is to slide to the front and the back again, nothing more. Then at the inside we got this Alcantara surface. It's very good because, especially when you're on the racetrack, you don't slide on it to the right and the left. And it's also good for the climate function because in the summer it doesn't get that warm, in the winter it doesn't get that cold. Let's get in now. So the interior is, well, it's not that exciting when you see all the luxury features or something. It's not about luxury, it's really about racing. We, for example, we see it here also with this carbon fiber structure here. Then you can look at the contrast stitches we also have on the Alcantara. So I'm really a fan of Alcantara and therefore I also like this interior. It's not too much, so you shouldn't get too distracted um, from your view on the road. The one special thing about the interior is the analog clock and it's also a timer, for example also for the racetrack. This one is included in the Sport Chrono package with a serial here also in the Cayman GTS. You have actually two options, you can have it digitally here in the central instruments and also it's displaying here, right here in this very beautiful clock. I'm showing you the options right here now, for example now we're looking at GPS screen, then we can switch, between, for example, have the, um, the mobile phone on, the radio, with some information about fluids. I would say, if shifting is any fun in any car, this one is. Here in the Sport Plus mode, when I shift down, listen to this. You know, this gas in between. This is the typical old racing style. Usually you would do it manually, but in this case with the Sport Plus mode, it's been done automatically. Listen again. So beautiful. The Porsche came in GTS is all about precision, and so you feel it in every turn. Of course, you expect it from a Porsche, but just to mention it, every command you give in the steering wheel is directly transported on the road. Here we can see the Jaguar F Type R, the R Coupe, it's a 550 horsepower V8 compressor. And behind me there's the V6, the F-Type S with 380 horsepower. And actually these two very versions are also the one that will be available with all-wheel drive. Also for the convertible, so coupe and convertible also with all-wheel drive, but just for these top versions then. The all-wheel drive will be predominantly rear-wheel driven still, so as long as the road is dry and everything is under control, a lot of power will be direct to the rear wheels as soon as there will be some slip also some torque will be directed to the front wheels and we're going to experience that on the racetrack here today we got dry conditions so not so much power should be directed to the front wheels but very very exciting to see how the f-type behaves you now because you know the f-type is a really wild ride and if you got so much power on the rear axle it can also be well very 
funny here when you really push the throttle. So we're very exciting how this car behaves now with the all-wheel drive because actually it will be very important. In Germany, for example, they say that two-thirds of the customers in future will pick the F-Type with all-wheel drive and also the Porsche 911. Just worldwide, two-thirds of all customers already pick it with all-wheel drive and so this has a lot of significance for the customers. Just to give you a short impression here from the exterior, this is the F-Type S, 380 horsepower with the V6. You also got the S logo in the front and already have the sporty spoilers here. You especially see it here in the front and also on the side you see a massive side spoiler. And here on the inside we got the sport seats with a very good combination because we got Alcantara on the inside and leather on the outside and that really keeps you tied to the seat here and I think it's the best combination so far. What well, is actually a pity that the sport seats are rather for small people. You see that this kind of neck part here, it already begins well almost at my almost at my lower back in this case and my head goes above the seat. So if you're like 190 or taller, it's not the best position for you. Already here in the S version we got these orange shifting levers, although they don't feel too good, too good in the quality, but we got that nice flattened and steering wheel and also this cockpit-like controls reminds you of the aircraft and I've already told, the, told you in the full review of the effort this Eurofighter button here, this uh, can be driven in the sports mode either or in the snow mode if you push it up, but as you got the all-wheel drive here, So let's start here now with the F-Type Coupe R with the new all-wheel drive. You know the last time we've driven the F-Type R Coupe as it was released, so also check out that full review, it was very exciting there, also in different versions there. But now with the all-wheel drive, so I'm really looking forward to the difference. And of course here again on the Nürburgring racetrack today, we've experienced how the F-Type R performs here. You know, maybe I've said it before, the F-Type is one of the most fun cars there is on the market right now because it's actually also so brutal. You heard that one? And you maybe also felt it, although you are sitting behind the camera. It's really so much fun to drive this car here on the racetrack. So brutal. But then again, when I really push the throttle, also some power is directed to the front wheels and that helps me really to control the car. That's my instructor. So and now again. Yeah well now on dry conditions of course we don't feel the effect of the all-wheel drive that much. But it's actually a good safety feature to have it, unless you're not really going on the edge. Because when you just have the rear wheel drive, you easily feel when the car gets to the limits. With an all wheel drive car, it's more the case, you can better push it at first, but then it can break out all. Welcome here again now in the V6, 380 horsepower, also in the new all-wheel drive version. So I must say from the V8, of course, you just have so much power there and the F-Type R is also a little bit stiffer on the road. 
with the V8 and also the special suspension in the up. But here in the V6, you hear it maybe also through this microphone. It's really totally different sound. I wouldn't really uh, say that the well, V8 is so much more powerful from the sound. It's really something completely different. Just compare it also when you heard the other one in the video. I think it's really a very interesting detail. And what I immediately realized is that when I accelerate hard out of the corners, the V8 does have this little bit of extra power where it's like one second faster that the, all of the power sets in. However, you have to think about the V6 is lighter, so that can also be an advantage than in the corners. And with the all-wheel drive, the difference is also a little bit less than just with the rear-wheel drive between the two cars, because due to the four-wheel drive, the power can be brought to the ground very well. So, now to the starting line, really having a throttle. Wow. Nice sound here as well. Although I say I do prefer the V8 sound, don't you? What do you think? So, and again, I must say just from the all-wheel drive perspective, the car is really a little bit easier to drive than the rear-wheel drive version. With the rear-wheel drive F-Type, you always have to watch a little bit out that your rear doesn't slip out. And here you can just steer the car a little bit with the throttle. So you don't have to be afraid then. It's just when you break the laws of physics, when you're just too fast, then also an all-wheel drive cannot help you. So of course it's not only for the racetrack, the all-wheel drive, it also helps you in general when you're on the road or maybe when it's snowy or rainy, because then you can also get better control of the car. There is this electronic snow mode available for the F-Type always for the rear-wheel drive cars. But I mean with this kind of power output, it can really help you also to have the all-wheel drive that you can better control the car in snowy or rainy conditions then. You may wonder why I got three cars here today and also in different colors. Well, you asked me first of all to show us different colors and also you asked me to show basic versions, not only the top sports version when they are available. And so we can firstly see the basic new design changes in the third generation all new TT as well as the differences between no exterior S-Line, S-Line and the TTS. And we're starting here. First of all, that's the general new feature, the headlights kind of have this claw design here, I would call it. They are very prominent here in the front and together with the new design line on the hood, which is sharper, the new bigger front grille and you see here the four Audi rings. They were inside the grille before in the second generation. They moved up now and are kind of a reference to the R8. And the front grille is here black in the basic version. It's not shiny, but still you see it's huge and therefore the whole car is more masculine. And when we then move up to the S-Line, we especially see these changes in the front again. Here we got a shiny black front grille and we got a front spoiler here, which is additional. And also these fake air intakes on the left, on the right, are altered in this version also with a black shiny element here. And then when we finally get to the front wheel of the TDS, here we see this aluminum silver structure which makes it even stronger and even more exclusive. I like this grille very much actually and it symbolizes, okay, again we see a symbol that here we got the most power. From the side profile the biggest difference is here, the TTS and the S-Line we got an additional curve here, whereas in the no S-Line, we rather go straight to the back. 
And finally, we compare the rear end, starting with the most powerful one, the TDS again. And here you see we got four pipes, very, very powerful. And we also got this very prominent rear diffuser. Then we move down to the S-line, normal petrol engine, but S-line. And here we got only two pipes, but they are still very powerful. And we also got this fake structure here. Um, when you look at it in detail, it looks a bit cheap, but when you move a bit far away, it looks very good. I think. And finally, the basic non-S-line version. We got the same exhaust, but we don't have a structure in the lower part here. I know some of you really look at the details, as do I. And so you maybe have seen that here it says S-Line on this red car. Well, why? You already got the S-Line badge at the outside if you only got the S-Line package on the inside. Because this car here has no S-Line package on the outside, but on the inside. And then you already got the badge. And also to show you some different seats, these ones here have textile on the inside and leather on the outside and already got these integrated headrests. Here we got the full leather S sport seats. They look even better. They have this waffled structure here as well. Um, but I have to say, um, I'm not that a fan of the full leather seats anymore. From the optical side, they look very pretty. Um, but just from temperature uh, functions and also from the grip when you're driving a bit faster. Ones with textile or Alcantara inside are, in my opinion, better from the overall concept and they also look very good. My favorite here in this S-Line interior package is definitely the steering wheel. We had here a perforated structure at the sides, a flattened end. That's all you can dream of as a sporty car driver. Now we're testing the Audi TDS on the Ascari racetrack in southern Spain. The TDS always comes with a quattro. So we not only have the front wheel drive, but also power is directed to the rear wheels and we can really use it on the race racetrack because 310 horsepower we couldn't get on the ground just via the front wheels. And the new progressive steering really helps us here because you don't have to steer so much. You can always add two hands on the steering wheel that is very important on the racetrack. And we feel that the car is rather neutral. If you really push a throttle here inside the corners, then you realize that it is still electronically reduced a little bit of the power. And well, what can you say from the fun factor? The TDS is a true driving machine. It's so much fun to have such a compact car here on the racetrack. And I must say, you don't really need more of a sports car. You don't need a bigger engine, you don't need uh, an even longer wheelbase or whatever, you don't actually really need an R8. This TDS is so much fun here. So, and my conclusion here on the race track is the TT is something, a very good compromise right in the middle, I think. And uh, so we got a rather neutral car and it's also not too hard to drive. In this car we got the dual clutch transmission in here, the S-Tronic, also with a very beautiful shift lever. And I can just say it's just flawless shifting, I can only recommend that. And from the overall cockpit, this is kind of the innovation here now. First of all, the air vents, they're kind of like airplane turbines. And the control for the temperature here is just placed inside. Also, where the air is coming from and how much flow you want to have, it's all placed here inside. And that really cleans up the whole interior and it's a very clever solution. And the most important thing is the Audi virtual cockpit. You see here, we got a 12.3 inch screen, very wide, it's a very new concept and I must say it's very impressive, especially here with the Google Earth view. 
And you can also switch the view, for example, if you want less GPS screen, you put it here, you put the speed bigger, then you get a better overview. And of course, you can also pick all the other functions here in the screen. For example, your telephone and um, also the information about consumption and so on. So what's below the hood in the all-new Audi TT? First of all, a little detail. It's very easy to open the hood and I love that. Also, we got the hydraulic dampers here, so we have no problem that it stays open. We have had so many other cars lately, especially for Mercedes, where it's always a problem, first of all, to open it and then also just to stuff it with a stick here. That's very cheap. Volkswagen Audi always does it very good. So this TFSI a turbo petrol engine, it now delivers 230 horsepower, two liters capacity, and this engine already delivers 370 newton meters of torque. So just from the basic facts, you can now, uh, now tell when you're driving an old TTS before, you only need this new TT. So it may be really enough because this engine already has so much power now. And the acceleration figure, by the way, it's just right above five seconds. And there's also one who is using just right below five seconds. Here it got 310 horsepower. That's even more than in the predecessor version. There it only had only 272 horsepower. The torque is 380 newton meters. That is actually only 10 newton meter more than the usual petrol engine. But the biggest difference is that we here got the C-wheel quattro, so we also get the more power better to the ground. Ah, guys, it's so hard to decide which car I would actually go for. They are all three so much fun to drive. The Porsche Cayman was just incredible, incredible from the driving experience because it was really so easy to spin it around just when standing still. Really this perfect weight balance, so I think it's the perfect sports car, even better to drive than the Porsche 911 because there you feel more weight at the rear part and then it also pushes you over the front wheels when you're accelerating, driving quite slow and um, wasn't so keen on the 911 driving in comparison to the Cayman, how it behaved actually. So as for this pure sporty driving, I really go for the Cayman instead of a 911. Um, but now in comparison to the F-Type and the TT we've shown you, well, it is kind of expensive already, the Cayman then, and such a great look also, really great design, I love that as well. Um, then the F-Type, it's more that kind of brutal sports car. Um, I think it's not that well balanced actually, but that can also be a good thing, not lap time wise, but fun wise. So it's a little bit more brutal to drive actually, uh, not that kind of controllable as the Cayman and well the TT is the best pick as for the price definitely. So if you think about that when you start with a low build TT and then put it against the high build F-Type or Cayman, can end up that you pay double the price and then it becomes quite clear that the TT is just on the paper definitely the winner of this comparison because it offers a lot of sportiness already for little money in comparison. It's of course, it's not a cheap car, just on the global car market, but in comparison to the other two cars, it is definitely. And if you don't look at the budget, I think I would still go for the F-Type. The interior build quality is not as good as with the Audi or the Porsche, but it offers you again a lot of emotion and I think also the best exterior. So, these ones were my thoughts. Now looking forward to your thoughts about these Greek cars in the comments. Thank you very much to watch Audio Gefühl. See you next time with another episode.